A contour map is shown for a function f on the square region r. Notice how we have this closed interval by this closed interval, where this first interval would be the interval for x, and this would be the interval for y. So in our case, notice how the intervals are the same, so we have a square region r, again from 0 to 4 along the x-axis, and 0 to 4 along the y-axis, gives us this square region, which in our case will be the region of integration. We're asked to use the midpoint rule with m equals n equals 4 to estimate the value of the double integral over the region r of f of x comma y. The midpoint rule is shown here, where we approximate this double integral by determining this double sum where we have f of x sub i bar comma y sub j bar times delta a, where each product here represents the volume of a rectangular prism or cuboid as long as f of x comma y is above the xy plane. But here because m equals 4 and so does n, because m equals 4, we divide this horizontal interval into four equal partitions. So we'll cut it in half and then half again. And then because n equals 4, we do the same for the interval for y from 0 to 4. So we'll divide it here and here. So because m equals n equals 4, notice how this divides the region R into 16 smaller regions or 16 smaller partitions. So looking at our midpoint rule, delta A would be the area of each smaller partition. Notice how each partition is a 1 by 1 square, so we know delta A in this case is equal to 1. And then x sub i bar comma y sub j bar would be the midpoint in each partition, which would be here, 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 and so on. So we're going to be using these coordinates to determine the function value, which we'll use when approximating the double integral using the midpoint rule. And luckily, notice how each of these midpoints does fall on a contour line or a contour curve, so we know the exact function value at that location. To get a better idea of how the midpoint rule works, let's look at an animation. Let's say the function f of x comma y is this blue surface pictured here. Notice how because it is non-negative, or it's above the xy plane, we could approximate the double integral of f of x comma y over this square region here using the midpoint rule by partitioning the region of integration as we see here into 16 smaller partitions. And then to approximate the value of the double integral, we would determine the function values at the midpoint of each square, and then multiply that by the area of each partition, which gives us the volume of each of these rectangular prisms, or cuboids, we see here. So we use the volume of the cuboids to approximate the volume under the surface over the same region. We can still use the midpoint rule to approximate our double integral, even if the function f of x comma y is not above the xy plane, but it would not be interpreted as volume. So going back to our example, let's set this up on the next slide. The double integral over the region r of f of x comma y is going to be approximately equal to, we have a double sum where j is equal to 1 to 4, and i also equals 1 to 4, of f of x sub i bar comma y sub j bar times delta a. Again, delta a is the area of each smaller partition, which we already know is equal to 1. Let's write this out and write the coordinates for each of these 16 points. So the double integral is going to be approximately equal to, this point here would have coordinates 1 half comma 1 half, so we'd have f of 1 half comma 1 half times delta a, which is 1, plus f of, notice how here j is the inner index, so the next point would be x sub 1 bar comma y sub 2 bar, which would be this point here. So it's f of 1 half comma 3 halves times delta a, which is 1, plus f of, next would be this point here, f of 1 half comma 5 halves times 1, plus f of 1 half comma, this point here would have a y coordinate of 7 halves times delta a, plus next 
i takes on the value of 2, so we have x sub 2 bar comma y sub 1 bar, which would be this point here. So we have f of 3 halves comma 1 half times delta a plus next would be this point, working our way upward. So we have f of 3 halves comma 3 halves times 1 plus f of, again, x stays at 3 halves, y increases to 5 halves, times delta a, which is 1, plus f of 3 halves, comma, 7 halves, times 1, plus, now the value of i changes to 3, so we have f of x sub 3 bar, comma, y sub 1 bar, which would be this point here, we work our way up this column. So f of 5 halves, comma, 1 half, times 1, plus f of 5 halves comma 3 halves times 1 plus f of 5 halves comma 5 halves times 1 plus f of 5 halves comma 7 halves times 1. Hopefully you get the idea here. Plus, finally i takes on the value of 4, so we have f of x sub 4 bar comma y sub 1 bar, which would be this point here. So f of, this would be 7 halves comma 1 half times 1 and so on. Now we'll determine the function value using the contour plot, or level curves. So for f of 1 half comma 1 half, notice how the function value would be 11. So if 11 times 1, which is just 11. And then from here we have f of 1 half comma 3 halves, which would be here, a function value of 4, plus f of 1 half comma 5 halves here, which is 19. Notice f of 1 half comma 7 halves is also 19. Plus now we're going to start here. This is going to be f of 3 halves comma 1 half. Working our way up, we'll have 19 plus 11 plus 4 plus 4. Next, we're here at f of 5 halves comma 1 half. So the function value is 19. Then we have 11, 4, and 4. And then finally, we're here at f of 7 halves comma 1 half, which is 11. And then we have 4, 19, and 19. This sum comes out to 182, which is the approximate value of the given double integral over this region. I hope you found this helpful.